European countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Sister Louise, Father Francesco, Minister Catherine, Dara, Fiona, David, Anya, the whole team, and all behind this wonderful moment that has brought Bridget back home. To the Bridgetine family, to the wider religious family of the diocese, as many I see them here, to the people of Kildara, the place of the oak, today, is a wonderful day. I'm told that Capernaum today is the modern city of Telhum, on the northwest shore of the Lake of Galilee. A synagogue was excavated there after the First World War. It's not thought to be the one that Jesus walked into in this morning's text from St. Mark, but the synagogue that immediately followed it, probably built around 200 AD. Capernaum offers Jesus a reference point. We all in our life need reference points. The wonderful students of Kildare Town Community School, the wonderful students, pupils of St. Bridget's, we all need reference points. Jesus starts his public ministry from Capernaum and its hinterland. He calls it his own city. It was here he cured the centurion's son, the man with the withered hand. It was here he resolved a dispute on temple tax. Capernaum very definitely gave Jesus a reference point. In many ways, if Capernaum was the home city of Jesus, Kildare is the home place of St. Bridget. And today, we have brought her home. At least a relic taken from the bone fragment of her head, which rests in the church of St. John the Baptist in Lumiere, outside Lisbon. Having been brought there by three Irish knights, so well typified by the three girls on their horseback as they came in procession earlier. But the three Irish knights in 1273, on the way to the Holy Land, ended up at Lumiere and disposed the relics there. They also buried the knights within the church. Obtaining a relic of a saint, as David Mungy will attest, is no easy feat. I visited Lumiere in October 2021 with the singular intention of bringing home a relic for St. Bridget's Church here in Kildare. I was privileged, and I showed Francesco the photograph, of I holding the beautiful brass reliquary in Lisbon in Lumiere. Unfortunately, I couldn't squeeze it into my Ryanair bag. <laughs> the veneration of the cult of saints became a notable feature of the church in Ireland from the beginnings of Christianity. Many walk the Camino de Santiago without realizing the relics of St. James are there in the Cathedral of Compostela at the end of their walk. I have great memories from my Drogheda days of the relic of St. Oliver Plunkett in St. Peter's Church on West Street in Drogheda. Mind you, just like Bridget at Lumiere, it's the head of Oliver that's venerated in Drogheda. As a young man, I always was more taken in some ways by the prison door from Tyburn that's also with the side wall of the church in Drogheda, a gruesome reminder of the death the Mead man endured. With our early saints, it's always hard to divide fact from fiction. The process of formal canonization was not established until 1159. So many of our early saints, Bridget, Patrick, Colum Kill, Conleth, and several others, they became saints by popular acclamation, acknowledgement. As with many of those saints, the line between fact and fiction blurs with the passing of time. As Sister Rita, 
the great advocate and scholar of St. Bridget reminds us, the more one tries to unravel the mystery, the more the mystery deepens. So what might be the reference point for every one of us today in Kildare for Bridget? It's too simple to install a relic and fold her arms and leave it at that. She would call us to do much more. What, in some ways, were the character traits that defined her? To mention just a few, she was hospitable. She was a peacemaker. She was a strong woman of faith. It was here she established a monastery that in time would separately house men and women. Kildare was a powerhouse of formation. How she secured the site for her monastery is a story well known to every school child in the country. The local chief told her she could have as much land as her cloak could cover. He was kind of tired dealing with her. She was plaguing him so often with her request. And he just said, look, at whatever your cloak covers, you can take that and build your monastery. Her cloak in time will cover the plains of the Curragh. I also think it's significant that legend suggests Bridget was born on a doorway on a threshold. Tradition suggests it was forward, near Dundalk. I think the image of the doorway speaks to us in the Kildare and in the Ireland of 2024. An Ireland of 100,000 welcomes, cave me the But sadly, as recent evidence suggests, not always if you're fleeing persecution, war, or trauma. The scenes on some of our streets and the misinformation that passes unverified on social media disturb. Because this is not the hospitality that Bridget espoused. As the monk and local scholar Cogitosis would remind us, Bridget, with Bridget, every guest is Christ. I found it ironic but where some protests were taking place recently, the buildings that were in question were in fact named after St. Bridget. What transpired of some of these buildings would be anatema to all that Bridget stands for and all that any of us should stand for. This is much more important than installing a relic, inculcating values championed by Bridget. The Brigidines and their team at Sullis Reed, Rita, Mary and Phil, they allow the legacy of Bridget to continue to be nourished and explored. For this, we're all grateful, as we are to the Brigidines in Tullow, for the gift of the relic. St. Bridget's Day in ancient times became the reference point for all the seasons that followed. It dictated the ploughing, the sowing, the turning of the sod. The feast was seen as a celebration of the incarnation of Christ into all aspects of life. In the milking of cows and the tending of the heart. In threading the loom and gathering the peat. The breath of prayer blessing each movement. A naming of creator upon each mindful deed. May we ensure in Kildare and in Ireland that the Creator is at the heart of all we do and say in the name of Bridget on this day of her homecoming. Amen.